All right. Oh, hello, everyone. I'm Asher. I'm here along with two other fellows from my campus. We are from CMR Institute of Technology, Bangalore, India. And uh, so we just wanted to talk about our story, in the, I mean, how the UIF program has helped us and a few drawbacks uh, back home. So the Indian education system is like, completely different from uh, how, how you guys, uh, I mean, the college over here, colleges over here. So while interacting with others, I realized that you know, over here you can change your major midway, but in India it's not like that. So that's just one of the uh, many examples that points out what the differences are. So the primary drawback is in India, the, um, there's a lot of emphasis on grades. So when we talk about exams and uh, you know, judging people, it's, it's, it's all on, uh, it's, it's the memory part that is being assessed and not the knowledge they possess or how competent they are. Now, this is just further escalated by the fact that there's just way too much focus on classroom learning. So in, up to a maximum of say eight or nine hours a week is spent in like uh, theory learning, I mean, in practical learning and learning from peers, etc. The rest is just sitting in class and listening to lectures. And, and one more thing is that there's very uh, few students who take up research seriously and that's mainly because there's very little funding and like Will mentioned, there's very little innovation coming up because, I would, because there's, uh, of this issue. Hi all, this is Priyanka Srivastav and I am here to speak about the changes we brought into our campus as a UIF. The help and support from the faculty and student is very important to bring about any change in the campus. With the, uh, we have brought about an efficient student mentorship approach to help the students to chalk out their skills, academics and interest. And also with the signing of the three memorandum of understanding, we were able to provide the students funds for their uh, student projects, mini projects and workshops. We were a also able to provide scholarships for the students who are in need of financial aid and they are really deserving, they deserve the scholarship so as to complete their higher education. Um, some of the challenges we faced uh, during this process, hey everyone, my name is Abhay Rangan. Uh, some of the big challenges we faced is not with uh, respect to the technical education that's important to us, but with the attitudes. Uh, uh, we just spoke about impact, uh, but there's been a lot of things that, uh, that have been holding us back. Uh, some of them is uh, what we call um, necessary change versus uh, comfortable change versus uncomfortable change. So comfortable change is when the university is happy to go along with the change strategies. Uh, they, they win, we win, everybody wins. Uh, but when you ask difficult questions, uh, for example in India, you're supposed to be at college at 8 a.m. in the morning and you're supposed to leave at 4. Uh, you're not supposed to go anywhere in between. It's like a school. Uh, they call us children. And uh, when you miss a class, your parents get a text uh, on, on their phones that say you've missed it. Uh, so. So, so yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty school-like environment and I don't think you, all of you face that here. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur myself and I, uh, I run a non-profit back home and my attendance is uh, very low because I'm always taking meetings and it's hard, my parents get a text every single day. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so uh, it's, uh, uh, these real, real problems are, are hard to deal with. Uh, so universities have uh, this idea is so much ingrained in their culture that they find it uncomfortable to deal with. Also, there's a lot of uh, fear involved um, in the process. Uh, for example, when I tried to remove the attendance rules, uh, some of my faculty members threatened to fail me in two subjects or I wouldn't be launched as a fellow. So uh, there's, there's a lot of fear uh, involved and intimidation involved. So uh, I sometimes believe that we're made, uh, made about made out to be pawns. So when the university uh, has some important people coming, they're like, oh, these are change agents. Uh, but um, uh, you know, in, in, in practice, I think we have a long way to go before we actually uh, be beacons of change uh, in, in our campus. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. So ultimately, it's about culture. A lot of these faculty members think of us as kids and that uh, our opinions are not taken seriously enough. And I think uh, that's one thing we really want to be working on. Thank you so much for your time. Alright, um, I would love to uh, just give you guys a few remarks about, um, about our work in India and then we could just have uh, sort of a quick conversation about how to take this uh, forward. So, uh, we only went global in the last uh, 
eight months or so because the NSF grant made it sort of onerous for us to do that. But since then, we have had, uh, let's see, just a handful of schools. Netherlands, can I hear it from the Netherlands? Woo! Yeah, Woo! Peru? Woo! Peru? Yay! All right, Uruguay? Woo! Yeah, Australia? Woo! China? Uh -huh. <laughs> Canada? Okay, Canada's not here today. Um, and what about India? Yeah, now India, we've been able to really grow in earnest uh, thanks to the Google partnership. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's uh, for me personally, it's very gratifying. We, my parents came from India two years before I was born. Uh, I saw from them, you know, they came over with nothing, no money. Uh, an, a deep um, belief in the power of education and a, a real hustle, an immigrant hustle. And, and we talk about you know immigrants a lot these days um, on the national stage here in the U.S. Um, and I can tell you that uh, there's I feel a real drive to um, to uh, to put every ounce of my effort into this program to help U.S. students realize uh, just how much the American dream is still alive, just how much freedom to operate and influence you have over your ecosystems, which has given rise to this program. And over the last five years, we've been able to listen to you deeply about how you affect change and, and what those strategies are. And we've been able to sort of uh, uh, disseminate that knowledge, right? This network, the power of the network, you're learning from one another how that's done. But in India, we're really starting all over again in a sense, right? We don't have the five-year history, and what we know is that we, uh, we have to go deep on understanding what the key issues are in the Indian ecosystem. So uh, my colleagues and I, we went in September on a seminal trip and learned uh, an incredible amount. We went out to uh, Madan Pali Institute of Technology. Can I hear it from Madan Pali? Woo! All right. Uh, we went to uh, a bunch of institutions all across uh, yes, five campuses in five days. And uh, we, and in Delhi and Bangalore, as well as the outskirts of Bangalore, a uh, funny story there, it took us three hours to get there, involved a bribe, you know, involved like having to cross state lines, um, which taxi cab drivers cannot do without a written permission, a permit. Um, so all kinds of different ecosystem rules there. Um, so when we first opened up this application to Indian students, we had 600 requests for applications in a week. 600, which is incredible. That's nothing like what we see in the US. So Indian students are hungry for opportunity, hungry for any opportunity to learn and uh, evolve and grow. And of those uh, applicants, we picked uh, 20 students from about 10 institutions uh, last fall. Um, and then another uh, 56 from uh, about 15 institutions in the spring. So um, what I can tell you um, is that here in the US, we have 4,500 accredited institutions. In India, 35,000. Most of them came online around the time that Infosys came online. So do you guys know Infosys? All right, so you, do you remember uh, back in your youth, the whole, uh, all computer science jobs are being, uh, going to be exported and to, to India, right? They're all still in India, Will tells me. Oh, they're all still in their youth. Okay, so way back when you were a little kid. So, so, uh, but, but, so when uh, India's uh, computer science uh, uh, economy uh, exploded, so the government decided to invest in public schools to allow more Indian students to, uh, participate. So a lot of these academic institutions are startups. They've only been around for uh, 20 or so years. Um, so there's still a lot of learning to do. Things like alumni associations and uh, um, uh, uh, the standard practices outreach programs, those kinds of things just don't exist yet. But I think that there's great power in what you students are coming here to the U.S. Uh, to learn, learn from one another, and bring back and advocate for, but more importantly, learn how to prototype and, uh, and try out different strategies that demonstrate to your institution the power of uh, inclusive teams, of uh, balancing gender equity, uh, women, uh, males and females participating alongside one another in uh, different degrees. Uh, 
a couple of other key things, and then I'm going to open it up for uh, comments from my panelists. In, the, in India, my colleagues mentioned that uh, you know once you decide your major, you can't uh, switch majors. It's just not done. Uh, the other important thing is that uh, you, if you are in the top percentage of your class, you're something called a topper. Um, so five percent or so, you know, highest GPA, and that gives you the permission, basically, to bid for the best major. Uh, so the best majors are going to CS because the um, because that's where the jobs are. That's where the Indian economy is just booming. Um, but those book smart students aren't necessarily the creative ones who are skipping class. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the ones who are hustling and creating opportunity. And uh, so how do we change the paradigm to um, uh, be more inclusive? How do we allow uh, non-CS students to be exposed to CS? How do, how do we allow students to be exposed to interdisciplinary learning opportunities at large? Um, these are some of the key uh, challenges that Indian students uh, will have to wrestle with and then help teach one another, just as we did here in the United States. Um, I think that's really the, the power of the movement. I, I would love to get your thoughts on that. Um, we'll start with Will. Um, yeah, I think, so first of all, um, I empathize with you uh, for having to go into a very rigid system and try to affect change. Um, but I believe you can do it. Now, um, I suffer from something that's called a, a cognitive bias. It's an optimism bias. Uh, I know how difficult the challenge is. Um, I guess, uh, and I'd love to hear if it's the case also in the United States, but I think, um, I think it's going to take a while to bring about institutional change um, in India, as you said. Uh, you have ways to go. Um, but I think what you can do is you can find a lot of extracurricular ways of introducing innovation into your campuses. Um, and I, uh, and I, think that's, I think that's the way to go. Um, so a lot of what we're doing, and some of you are, I think are gonna come over to, uh, to, to Google again on Monday, and you'll hear more about what we're doing, but a lot of what we're doing in India uh, is, is trying to kind of switch on a lot of extracurricular activities on campus. Um, and uh, I really encourage you to take a, take a look at that as a, as, a way, as a way to get started. Um, so yeah, I think you know, re remain optimistic. Um, I'm an optimist, uh, but be careful of the optimism bias and be realistic about what you can achieve as well. So yeah, um, the change, I mean, especially in India where the, the way the hierarchy works and everything, it's really hard to bring about change into the, I mean, the entire system over there. So it has to be small. And uh, we have made some small changes. I mean, I'm inclined to say we were lucky, but then uh, I think now I'm going to say we manufactured our luck. <laughs> yes. So, so during a, a stakeholder meeting, we uh, we had one of the alumni members present who had, who was an entrepreneur himself, and uh, we signed an MO, I mean, memorandum of understanding with him, and that uh, helped fund a few projects. So, uh, just ideas which were present with students until that moment uh, now become prototypes, and uh, so we have. Uh, about five new teams working on various prototypes thanks to what we've achieved through this. So I think if we keep going this way, there's a lot more we can do in the coming years. Um, what I find is a great place on campus is, is the canteen. So people come there and talk as equals, including the faculty members. We have a lot of progressive faculty members too. And when we sit and eat food at the same place, we're equals. This is not a classroom environment. They, they entertain ideas, they encourage ideas, and we, we openly talk. And uh, I think we're trying to make our classrooms more like canteens. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, I feel, the simplest way to put what uh, I personally want to see through the program. Uh, what I want to urge our fellow uh, uh, fellows from India, uh, uh, I mean, I would love to collaborate with all of you because I'm sure uh, the cultural problem exists throughout the country. Uh, uh, the the nitty-gritties might be a bit different, uh, but we have the same problems. Uh, and I would love uh, uh, for us to form a union or, or something of that sort. 
that collectively from all corners of the country uh, puts pressure on universities to be a bit more open, uh, be a bit more encouraging uh, towards student entrepreneurs, or or uh, and we could showcase your ideas uh, on our campuses, and we could we could just uh, make it big. So uh, I'm a big fan of collaboration, and I would love to be a biggest fan um, in collaborating with you and, and just championing your efforts. Thank you so much. themselves refer to the students as children. And there's this incredible power dynamic um, that, that that reflects. Um, and that doesn't change overnight. Um, that changes slowly by um, uh, persistent, um, uh, patient, uh, uh, employing of empathy, and bringing about uh, changes that are reasonable and demonstrate that they're in the best interests of students. And then um, and a real peer pressure from responsible students like you uh, to, uh, to help your peers understand uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the leeway that they will be afforded as a result and the responsibility that comes with that. Um, so I think there are some, uh, it's a long road ahead I have every confidence that you bright students now exposed to um, innovative and creative cultures and this incredible network of fellows will be able to um, bring about such changes. Um, and I'm optimistic about the future of the Indian ecosystem with uh, you students at hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. 